Welcome back, friends. We're here, finally. At last, Has Been Hotel has been released. And I really like the premise of this show in the pilot. Charlie, the daughter of Lucifer, trying to rehabilitate sinners so they don't get killed down in hell. And then we have her supportive girlfriend, Vaggie, their first client, Angel Dust. And Husk and Nifty are trying to help. And Alistair, yeesh, Alistair. I doubt A24 or Amazon Prime will allow me to post full reactions of the episode on YouTube. So full reactions going to be on Patreon in the link in the description below. Leave a like and let's get started. It was ruled by beings of pure light. Angels that worshipped good and shielded all from evil. Lucifer oh, was one what was that in the corner? Angels. From the dust of earth they created Adam and Lilith. Equals as the Lilith. host of mankind, Adam demanded control, and Lilith refused to submit to his will. Drawn in by her fierce independence, Lucifer found her, and the wow. two rebellious dreamers fell deeply in love. For with this single act of disobedience, evil finally found its way into Earth. With it, a new realm of darkness. And evil? Sin. Heaven cast Lucifer and his love into the dark pit he had created never allowing him to see the good that came from humanity only the cruel and the wicked ashamed that's demoralizing Lucifer lost his will to dream every <sighs> year they would send down an army an extermination to ensure hell and its sinners could never that's rise that's the reason for the cleansing charlie <gasps> oh shit did you hear all that uh yeah i was right there sorry stephanie I beatrice you worked up after an extermination happens how long has it been now not that long. What? Only seven years. My, oh, years. Something important, <sighs> I'm sure. Alistair says he has something to show us. Oh boy. Do you like blood, violence, and depravity of a sexual nature? Of course you do. That's why you're in hell. But yeah. What would you say if I told you there was a place to stay that had none of that? Welcome to the Has Been Hotel, <laughs> a misguided path to redemption. This is not a good commercial. She tries to work through her daddy issues by fixing you. Here we offer fun things, such as <sighs> functional staff <laughs> and 24-hour oh, I'm sorry, what the fuck was that? Uh, yeah, one note. Master, <laughs> I mean... Everyone remembers me from my radio show, the proper medium to express oneself. <laughs> but you insisted on this noisy picture box advertisement. Uh, the so TV. The talented celebrity you have right here. Angel, you're a porn star. So? A famous porn star. I'll yeah. Have the horniest sinners knocking these walls down. <laughs> get him. Wait, did you just want to get laid? If you film me going at it with Mr. Fancy Talk Creepy Voice here, you'd be rolling in pockets. Is he up for that? <laughs> Never going to happen. Angel, I appreciate <laughs> you wanting to use your special skills to um attract folks to the You can hear the quotation marks. But special I skills. I don't want to exploit you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh huh. This body was made to be exploited. I Jeez. got the arms, I got the stamina, I got the legs, I got the lung capacity. <laughs> lung capacity. I got the legs, the gag reflex, the holes. Okay, in the chest we get the point. <laughs> Dad's calling. Why can't he just make people stay here? That's... Oh, trust me, I can. Why do you think I'm here? You actually think I'd be cleaning <laughs> bottles? You don't love being here with me, Whiskers. Call me Whiskers again and I'll jam that bottle down your throat. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, don't. Come on, keep talking oh, wow. dirty. <sighs> Angel Threaten me with a good time. And no. Yeah, I'll head over there right away. What? Okay. Huh. I am suspicious of this. <laughs> oh, okay. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Cute. I can do this. Oh my god. <laughs> Somehow I know it. I'll get heaven behind my plan. Charlie, hold on. Nope, she's no way. too into it now. That bitch is halfway down the street. Is she? Oh, she's dancing. Uh, and singing. It's a warm, fuzzy feeling that walks through the air. Every street's so <laughs> revealing, it's hard oh. not to stare. Everyone can be redeemed from the evil to the strange. Where does she get her unending optimism? Good luck, Charlie. I don't trust. Oh, okay. Also creepy. Did you read the fine print? It's nice to meet you. Totally. Nice to meet you too. Oh. oh. I fucking 
fucking got you. You aren't here? No. It's such oh boy. a bummer, man. Everything down there is just so, blah, you know? This is an angel? <laughs> Ew. You'll love it. Uh, thanks. Isn't it hologram? Yeah. <laughs> I got you again, bitch! <laughs> fucking hilarious! <laughs> <laughs> Her little laugh is so amazing. We need a camera. Alistair. A video camera. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Can I help you with anything? Well, I've been a bad. Oh my boy, god. And I need a big, strong daddy to put me in my place. <laughs> On the path to redemption. Cut. Okay. Angel, <laughs> I need you to be less. Tone it down. If <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh, uh, whoops. Come on. So I was playing this gig. Do you know who I am? I'm fucking Adam. I'm the original dick. All dicks descend from Adam? Me. Adam? You think you want drummer dick? We fucked and it was awesome. Ugh. Like the first man, Adam? That means you. Uh, oh. That explains so much. I know, I fucking rock. Well, Adam, uh. sir. Call me Dick Master. No. Adam, who would really love to put his name on something? Fucking love putting my name on shit. Shit's the best. <laughs> To our oh no! Problem. It's not a problem uh, for them. Herpes. Yeah, that's what? a bitch. Math, global warming. Now wait, that's Earth's problem. They don't care. All right, Nifty, Nifty, Nifty. Oh my God, Nifty. Your line is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh. uh. <laughs> How was that? Well, Nifty, you, you didn't say the words. The well, this is unnerving. Oh, poor Baggy. Seems like you're having a bit of trouble there. Mm. Oh, you step in there, well, Why are you even here? <laughs> For the entertainment. The egocentric piece of shit that <laughs> will not be taken that, on dear. camera. This face was made for radio. Ugh. It won't be so entertaining to watch over an empty hotel, will it, shit ass? Fair enough. I'll tell you what. Let's make a deal. Nope, nope, nope. Being that stupid. You never ask me to engage with this frivolous television technology ever again. That sounds or okay. Charlie can come back to absolutely nothing. Your choice. Uh, don't make this choice without her. No. Well, damn. <laughs> it's right, the same. Everyone. It's the same. Let's make a fucking commercial. <laughs> You know, when you take oh, her poor Charlie. Salute, how many demons did you kill this year? Got a good 275 this year, sir. Those are my people. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. Doesn't care. That must suck for you. <laughs> Sinners made mistakes, sure, but everyone makes mistakes. Angels don't make mistakes. I, I, really are you kidding me? That. I know that. How does that feel? To know how little you matter. Oh, Charlie, don't listen to that. It's almost out of time. Guess we should get into it. Oh! Get into what? I know you guys fly down just to kill once a year. And it must be annoying to slip all the way here. If they join you in heaven, that trip disappears. You can wave at your farewell. <laughs> oh, my God. That's not what they're here for. Yeah, too black and white. Uh, insufferable. Oh. oh, shit. Um, oh, come here. We have something exciting to show you. Alistair pulled some strings and it's about to air. I pulled a few limbs, too. <laughs> oh. You all made a new one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I bet it. That's amazing. Shh, it's starting. <laughs> Welcome to the Hasbin Hotel. Oh. oh. What? Oh. <laughs> Charlie's horns came out. See if the next extermination is happening sooner than ever before. Uh. What does that mean, Katie? We're fucking Katie's dying. Uh. Is that we a dead angel? Body, sir. They've never managed to kill one of oh. us before. Who did it? Just, there won't be a demon left alive to pull a stunt like this again. Jeez. Frickin' heaven.
While this was simultaneously fun and demoralizing, Charlie is almost endlessly optimistic and I think you naturally want to pull her back a bit because we don't want her to be let down when things don't go her way. It feels like Vaggie is optimistic as well but is at least a little bit more down to earth or down to hell I guess. But I wonder if that's part of the reason they're together because Charlie makes Vaggie more hopeful about the life down here maybe. But I think a lot of TV doesn't start with the main characters already in a relationship but now I'm curious about their past and how they found each other. Flashback episodes, please, at some point. They're very, very cute together. But yeah, this series is in an interesting place because the first episode had to serve multiple functions. It had to explain to newcomers the entire premise while also entertaining people who have watched the pilot like a hundred times. And I'm glad it's welcoming to newcomers though because it's been a while since I watched the pilot. Maybe it was mentioned before, but I thought the reason for the extermination was solely to curb overpopulation. I didn't realize or I just forgot that overpopulation meant heaven killing them because they were afraid hell would be a threat to them. And for fun and entertainment, which if you're doing that, how the heck do you belong in heaven in the first place? So we see that just because you're in heaven doesn't mean you deserve to be there. Exhibit A, the A stands for Adam. The first thing we learn about him is that he immediately tried to gain power and take control over Lilith. Also, in popular media, there's such a focus on comeback stories, becoming better people so that you can get into heaven or the good place. But if you can become a better person, the opposite must be true as well. It must be possible. Those in heaven must be able to become bad people, especially since they've been convinced that genocide is somehow okay. So it feels like this conflict was never about good versus evil. How good can those in heaven be if they don't give a shit about people who are suffering? Like, we haven't actually seen anybody from heaven show even a shred of empathy for those in hell. And it could be because the moment they do, they're sent to hell, or those people were never allowed into heaven in the first place. I mean, it's clear that moral purity is not the determining factor for those who stay in heaven, and the selection process is more likely to be about reinforcing the existing power structure. That much is obvious considering Adam is the one in charge. And then Charlie's relationship with her parents feels extremely important to the show as well. We learn about Lucifer's backstory, and it doesn't feel like he deserved to be cast down into the shadows, but it also feels like he let that eat him up and change who he is. Question is though, why did he send his daughter on this errand? Like he knew that heaven wouldn't listen to her. Did he feel like it might be a wake-up call for her? It seems like he was filled with joy and wonder and creativity at some point, but the elder angels shut him down, which just yikes. And then he and Lilith gave knowledge to Eve and were punished for it. And the knowledge created a lot of evil, but it also created so much good. The angels honestly just seemed like they wanted beings that were stupid and docile and couldn't know better. So honestly, the themes in this show are quite similar to those in His Dark Materials. Really, really love that show uh, based on a book. But yeah, back to Charlie. Her mom has been missing for seven years, one for every deadly sin. I don't know if that's a coincidence. And it feels like she's doing something important. Uh, I wonder how the premise of the show will play out though, because getting people into heaven would be great and all, but as we've seen, heaven isn't solely a place for good people. Will they even want to go after they've earned their spot? And if there's a constant threat of violence, it'd be perfectly ethical to kill angels in self-defense. And we did see a dead angel, so curious if that's Lilith's work. Maybe each year has been spent within a ring gearing up for a war, and maybe those who somehow make it to heaven through the hotel can act as spies within heaven to help change the system. I don't think that's where they're going with this story, but the fact that it's fathomable and there are so many fascinating ways this story could go makes it so compelling. I do agree with Charlie though, I'm sure there are people in hell who could be good but just can't be that way because of the way hell is. Ideally, the hotel can be an escape from that. Uh, Alistair, meanwhile, oh my god, he's just in it for the lulls. I don't know how he reliable he can be, because he'll do whatever brings him himself the most entertainment. But if things start actually working, could it mean adding obstacles to their path to make things more fun for him? Or is it possible that he's not even being truthful about why he's doing this in the first place? But yeah, his freaking TV commercial was so bad. He's a radio star, so I guess I get it. Also, he says he hasn't been active in hell for some time. What does that mean? That he took a break and just, I don't know, did nothing for a while? Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. After watching the pilot for this and Hell of a Boss, I was actually much more drawn into the premise for Hasman Hotel, but Hell of a Boss wound up surprising me in so many ways, so I hope have high hopes for this as well. And the songs were very good, very funny and catchy. I could probably continue talking about this for a while, but we've got a few more episodes that have released this week, so let's get to those. Full reactions can be on Patreon in the link in the description below. Leave a like, and I'll see you guys soon with more. Bye, friends.